In this video, I'll show you how to use the Fluent Email Library for .NET to send emails out using the Razor Renderer. Welcome along to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts and this is Roberts Dev Talk. Now over the previous few videos in this series, we've been creating a microservice in C Sharp that checks an Azure storage queue for information about new customer orders and sends out confirmation emails. So now we come to the part where we're actually sending out the email. And I chose the Fluent Email Library for .NET Core because it works really well with a built-in dependency injection. And also you can use Razor templates to format your emails. If you've used ASP.NET MVC or Razor pages before, you'll be familiar with Razor templates. Now in this project, I'm using .NET 6. However, the example will of course work with any version of .NET Core 3.1 and above. Let's go. So to get started, I've used the .NET add package command to add the package fluentemail.core. Now Fluent Email has packages that support Mailgun, SendGrid and MailTrap. However, for this tutorial, we'll be using the SMTP sender. So I've added the package fluentemail.smtp. We'll be using Razor templates. So I've also added the package fluentemail.razor. Now, one of the great things about Fluent Email is it works really well with .NET Core's built-in dependency injection. So I can configure Fluent Email and add its helper methods to my container during startup of my application. We're using here a .NET Worker template. However, this will work just as well with an ASP.NET Core project as well. So let's head over to our program.cs file and find the configure services extension method under create host builder. Now, in this example, I'm using the send in blue email service. However, of course, it will work with any SMTP server such as Outlook or Gmail or even your own on-premise server. So first I need to get my SMTP credentials, which I've stored in my environment variables. So I'm going to grab my SMTP host, my SMTP username, and finally my SMTP password or key. Next, I can use some extension methods, which have been added to my service collection by the Fluent Email packages to add Fluent Email into my container. So first of all, I'll call the services.addFluentEmail method. Now the first parameter here is the from email address. The next method we'll call is the add razor renderer. This tells Fluent Email that we want to use the razor template renderer. And finally, we'll tell Fluent Email that we want to use the SMTP sender with add SMTP sender. This takes the credentials for our SMTP server. You can also construct an SMTP client beforehand and pass it directly into the method. And that's it for configuration of Fluent Email. Really nice and simple. Now this service is designed to pull information about customer orders from a message queue and then send out confirmation emails. So let's have a look at the order class and what information it contains. So here's our order info class. We have the customer's name, their email address, which will be sending the confirmation email to, the item they ordered and how many. Now in this project, we've created a task that runs every few seconds, checks the message queue for new customer orders. When one is found, that's when we want to send our email. So let's head over to our process order class. This contains the code that runs each time you receive a customer order. And first we'll add a using statement, which is using fluentemail.core. Next, we want to use the iFluentEmail helper class that comes with Fluent Email to create and send our emails. So we'll create a private iFluentEmail field and then inject it into our constructor. And finally, we'll assign to our local field. Now here we'll be using Razor templates. Now Razor templates are just strings that contain placeholders that the Razor renderer uses to bind information from the class into the template. So let's head down to our invoke method. This is where our order will be processed and our email will be sent from. We'll add an email template. Here we can see that Razor uses the at model syntax. So we have a model customer name, the quantity ordered and the item name. The Razor renderer will take information from the order and will replace those placeholders with that information. Notice also that it's a HTML string and Fluent Email by default sends our emails as HTML. Now we can use the Fluent API on our iFluent Email helper class to create and send our email. So first we'll create a new email, use the iFluent Email to field to set the recipient. Next we can set the subject. So we'll create a nice customized subject that has the customer's name in it saying thank you for your order. Finally, we'll use the using template extension method to tell Fluent Email which email template or Razor template we want to use. Using template takes a type parameter, which is order info, which is a type of model that we want to use. And then the first parameter is the template, which is our Razor string. And the second parameter is the order object that we'll be taking our template fields from. Finally, we'll use the send async method on the new email to send our email. We'll add a log message so we can see when our email has been sent. Now, before we run this, it's useful to note that you may get a Razor compilation exception when you try to run this code. And the fix for this is to head over into the CS project file and into the first property group, add the flag, preserve compilation context is true. 
This should fix any kind of razor compilation errors that you find. Now let's open our terminal and run our code using .NET run. There's a message waiting in our queue, so that our code should fire straight up, detect the order, and send the email. So we can see that Chris Roberts has ordered a Roberts Dev Talk t-shirt, and his email address is robertsdevtalk at gmail.com. And we can see the order ID 12345 has been processed and our email has been sent. So let's check our email. So straight away we can see our email has been received and the subject has been customized with the name of the person who ordered. Let's head over into the email and we can see that a nicely formatted HTML message containing all our information is there, just as we expected. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy coding. We'll see you next time.